a very good afternoon ladies and gentlemen i have with me uh, mr sudhakar rao he is the director of branding at the icfai group they run educational institutions across the length and breadth of the country and in fact they have educational institutions even in the northeast at this point of time as all of us know uh, we've seen very 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 different evolution in education as we know it online education was always happening but what we've seen in the last 3 to 4 months has been the accelerated pace of change in the education space we have seen many students who had probably book seats in global b schools but they have started learning from the comfort of their homes back there in india because they couldn't travel what do you think have been you know some of the big changes that have happened in the online education space over the last 3 4 months as covid 19 uh, hit us it hit us actually hard and uh, many industries including education have uh, started grappling with the available tools and they are trying to stay connected with the students in this journey of trying to connect with the students the phase one has been to make sense of what all can be done that is a confusion phase and they came out of it and then they thought that they have to actually begin their business in some manner phase two has been to build infrastructure what kind of tools have to be used and what is the easiest way and what is the uh, fastest method to actually stay in connection with the students and the third phase has been after having stayed in connection to build their institutional difference in the in the sense that every institution stands for its own philosophy its own unique uh, features so how these unique features and philosophy and differentiation is communicated and maintained through these online modes is what i think is the maturity phase and parallelly while while this thinking from confusion to infrastructure to differentiation has evolved the adoption of technology has been from tool to learning management system to you know own permanently built own learning management system in phase 1 they have selected uh, tools like zoom whatsapp uh, all, all kinds of other tools like google meet microsoft teams and the second phase they have gone to off the shelf learning management system that's available but it's not it's not the entirety of it but it is little better than the tool whereas in the third phase or which is the maturity phase the institutions have started building their own learning management systems for example at ikfi we have built a learning management system 12 years back and it is called quick force quick force integrates uh, a great deal of experience for the student online and it looks like the student is actually dealing with the entire institution it is the whole school feeling it's not just a tool i think a large number of institutions are also trying to build their own systems and have a permanent elements as i said having a tool is like staying in a hotel having an off the shelf elements is like staying in a rented house whereas your own elements is like building your own home as per your needs i think i think everybody would like to build their own home so you saying that you had built your own home some time back but uh, do you feel that more rooms in that home are suddenly being used now exactly in in the past we were not compelled to use the entirety we had built the infrastructure and kept it and we probably used about 30% in the past but now we are using it to the full potential that is 100% of all the infrastructure that is available there also in this in this phase when you know the capacity utilization moves up so rapidly you would also then find a lot of shortcomings in the existing systems right so isn't that a lot of kind of plug and play as well as you know keep on tweaking and improvising happening all along correct i i think that is true for any industry when they grapple with new technologies and uh, this generation of uh, online education will overcome all these difficulties the plug and play to maturity and i think it is a constant journey as we move forward as well more and more tools will be available and greater facilities will be created uh, all towards one objective that objective of giving the student a an, ex an exclusive feeling that he is not away from his own campus okay. i know it's not be bridged 100% but to an extent possible 
uh, I think the journey will be made to give it a whole campus feel. So, you know, online education for a very long time has been, especially in countries like India, where, you know, it's the big cities which have got the best talent when it comes to, uh, you know, the teaching pool of talent, if I may say so. You know, as a result, they've always said that online education is probably going to help the uh, far-flung areas or, you know, the interiors of the country. Has that day come upon us? Are we going to see a university without walls in the future or in the near future? Can I say so? uh, there are three important points here uh, with respect to your question. Number one, currently, if you take school education or higher education with the existing tools, the connect with the students is roughly around 50%. If you take the entire universe of the students, we are able to connect. I mean, when I say we, the entire uh, education as a system is able to connect not more than 50% of the students. There are, there are again three important reasons why it is not happening. You need devices for the students. You need internet connectivity. Third, you need bandwidth after having provided internet connectivity. And the fourth, electricity in all these areas. I'm not saying all these four are the hurdles in each and every region, no. But this is an interplay of either three or all the four in areas where we are not able to cover 50% of the student population. In India, as we talk, there are roughly about 37 crores of students at various levels from KG to PG to research studying something somewhere all the time. That's a huge segment. It is one fourth of the population. Now, out of that, we are able to reach through online education uh, today only up to 50%. So there's a large section out there which is not contacted yet. And therefore, the government will have to rapid build this infrastructure and take it forward. We need to come up with creative solutions to provide affordable devices and also ramp up the infrastructure for internet connectivity. Private players will have to come in, CSR activities will have to be taken up. Government itself will have to lead the way. And then on a mission mode, we can tackle this. I have seen, for example, in a city like Hyderabad, during the lockdown, the municipal administration department was on a mission mode to repair all the roads and relay the entire road system here in the city. Similarly, if you're on a mission mode to build the infrastructure and make sure everybody is connected, we will make a a decent progress in terms of reaching the student. I think the government has to come out to the mission mode and take the help of other allied players like private and the industry and CSR and voluntary groups. Now, having said this, the way forward is going to be blended learning. Now, blended learning is even when the institutions are open for face-to-face -face interaction, when the campuses are open, you can go and sit down in the classroom and learn even at that time, the component of online will be meaningfully uh, kept for your asynchronous learning. And I think a lot of time that we waste in the classroom, today we realize that we have wasted a lot of time inside the classroom. That should be kept for peer learning, learning from others by debate and discussion, by observation, building camaraderie, bonding, so on and so forth. And that's what the campus should be meant for. Other than that, I think we can given open source uh, categorization and references for students to pick up and learn online and come ready for a discussion inside the classroom and see the real world out there. So it's not going to be that COVID is going to stay put forever and we're going to have completely online. No, it's going to be a blended learning and we need to prepare our students of next generation for the real world like the way we've been doing. But the component of online will take a meaningful proportion and that will come continue to be our future okay and uh, you know uh, speaking about infrastructure and the advantages you see the cost of education coming down because obviously universities will be spending less on physical infrastructure as the online usage goes up it is like this by way of regulation already a lot of institutions have spent money on physical infrastructure so that's the that's a given. That's a sunk cost, if you want to call it. <laughs> now, so maybe it'll become like the hotel that you were referring to. 
Yeah, now, now when you are starting the online education or the hybrid education, you will have to have both. But if someone were to start afresh today, yes, the cost on the physical infrastructure would go down. And what it means is that the physical spaces, the real estate would not be regarded as premium as it were some time back. We would be spending more time and energy and regard for the value that is transacted through these tools and, and, and then meaningfully corroborated by the physical spaces. So physical space alone would lose premium. Since uh, you wear the hat of branding, I should ask you a question related to that. Do you see the university brand of the future in India as a brand that will have no physical building? It looks like a romanticized idea, but I don't think that's going to be real. Uh, in my in my view, you will need physical buildings as well. As I said, it is meant for peer learning, learning by debate, navigating through uh, counterpoints, leadership building, bonding, camaraderie, so on and so forth. I think physical campuses will be definitely required. It will not be like only online campuses and there will be nothing physical. I don't think that's a possibility. In my view, university brands will ride more on the value that they transact, the content that they bring forth on the table and allow the student to learn in a free and a forward looking manner. For example, earlier when we were teaching inside the classroom, we did not allow anyone to actually log into their devices. It was a disturbance, but today you cannot do that. We have to allow everyone to do that. And therefore there are implications on the teachers, the faculty members as well to teach or facilitate only that which is not available on the Google. We don't have to waste time. So some of the best teachers will become better and some of the systems will become more efficient and students also will be much, much more serious. Yes, some cost will definitely be reduced by sharing best of the faculty across various institutions. Today, the pooling of resources is the order of the day to lower the cost. And therefore, it is much, much better for the student uh, whose cost of degree will actually come down. And therefore, the ecosystem will benefit. Definitely, that benefit is available. But I will not agree with you that the entire physical campus will come to a north. <laughs> okay. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, you, you made a very important point about, you know, the talent available for teaching. Suddenly, there is a lot more possibilities, right? Because in the past, like we spoke earlier, the big cities used to corner a large share of the talent. So is there a level playing field that's already happened? Exactly. Uh, it is very important for us to understand that in the last four months, we've been able to get any resource online, even for a conversation. Earlier, that used to happen at a cost. It used to happen at a lag and it used to happen after a time. Now, today, all of them have changed their mindset and they're available. And even if they are available at a cost, that is much, much lower. Today, you have no burden of actually traveling across continents. You don't have to attend those conferences, which were always a waste of money. The same person can speak to millions and millions of people online, address the students of my 60 members in the class as well, and at the same cost. So, so the conferencing costs, have uh, completely been done away with and therefore today the resource sharing is becoming a reality for us and easier for us as well and even though the resource persons have realized that they need to plug into this ongoing situation and stay ahead so there is a competition uh, even among the resource persons I, I can tell you very frankly and they are more open-minded for example a professor in a university in uh, atlanta is able to connect with uh, my interest group and my students uh, just on a homework of two days. Earlier, I had to work with the same professor for two months. I mean, that's the difference. And, uh, you know, uh, last but not the least, uh, finally, you know, the government of India has kind of uh, recently announced the new education policy. So uh, what is your view about it from the inside. The new education policy is good. We welcome the policy on the following counts. One, the intent is really good. 
Some of the changes that they have proposed are quite sweeping in nature. Therefore, it is another word for boldness, which is another word for decisiveness, and therefore it is welcome. Which any, are those changes that you're talking about? Any intent that is as firm as this is most welcome. And therefore, some of the structural changes that they have brought in are going to be useful to our country and to the next generation, especially when you have an education policy change after a huge gap of 34 years. A lot of things have changed and therefore we need to be in tune with the time and from that point of view, yes, we welcome the new education policy. But there are certain final aspects where uh, I think it is difficult to implement in terms of uh, uh, teaching in the mother tongue or the native local language at the school level is one that they have to grapple with. I think a, a lot more discussion is required and the implementation responsibility is with the states and therefore it will hit some kind of snag. And some of the government arms of the schools themselves have said they will not be able to teach in the native language, for example, Kendra Vidya Lands. So this discussion will go on for another month and then fine tuning will be done. For any policy, fine tuning is required and the debate is unavoidable. After a month or so, I think things will settle down, better sense will prevail. And I'm sure from education industry and from on my own behalf, I would like to say that new education policy should work on these forward looking measures with greater intent and commitment of funds as well, and not just make it a slogan uh, that we have seen for all the while with various successive governments. I think it is time for the industry and the government and all the well-meaning players to work together, welcome these measures, fine tune them and apply to the system so that we, uh, we bring out the best and give it to the students and we owe it to them. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Rao, for a very interesting chat this afternoon. It gave us a very good glimpse into the way education in India and the world over is probably headed. Thank you so much once again. Thank you, Mr. Prasad. Thanks for inviting me. I enjoyed this conversation.